Good afternoon on what is a cool grey and cloudy day. It is Wednesday the 30th of November and I've got a nice hot cup of tea. Mm. And see parcel to continue uh, unboxing. Now I have unboxed several things from here before so this includes um, Stack of the Sorcerer and um, uh, the Vanish Conjurer, um, and of course um, Green and Pleasant Land, both of which are classic Call of Cthulhu supplements published by Games Workshop in the mid 80s. And the next thing I'm going to pull out from here is the Sea Elves, a complete culture for ElfQuest. Um, and uh, this is what was 1985 or so um, by Cosum for their Elf Quest role playing game. So, uh, let's open this up. It is a complete culture for ElfQuest. Descended from a band of high ones who were cut off from their fellows soon after the palace landed, the Sea Elves developed a new culture. Their isolation has caused them, like the Wolf Riders, to adapt to a lifestyle different from that which most Elves are accustomed to. The Sea Elves inhabit hundreds of islands which would go arc across the vast deep water uh, to form a, gr a great archipelago. Some of the islands are barren, some are lush and fertile. Nearly all are actively volcanic. The elves live a life that is like their island hopes, but once harsh and beautiful. Life is often short. Very old elves are uncommon on the islands. Soon after their arrival on the islands, the sea elves are allied with the wave dancers, suspicious similar to earthly dolphins. Wave dancers taught the elves to fish and the sea, which seed plants were good to eat. Sea elves and wave dancers still enjoy their alliance, often sharing a bond more similar to that of soulmates than that of bondmates. The wave dancers allow the sea elves to ride on their backs, giving the elves great range and allow them to seek larger and better fish on the open sea. Uh, some elves leave, live on the less fertile islands have become pirates raiding each other. More fortunate elves um, for food and essential goods. Sea elves have learned not to trust strange elves unless the strangers prove themselves to be friendly first. The sea elves includes everything you need to play a campaign taking place on the archipelago. The culture and history of the sea elves is completely described. The island environment of the sea elves is presented including rules for volcanoes, earthquakes and great waves. The sea elves have some magical powers which are possessed by no other tribes. These are also given here. The, the creatures of the sea and of the archipelago are described, including wave dancers, many arms, or many arms, uh, sea snakes, boat back turtles, many tooths, and skulkers. Island plants are also covered. Three scenarios complete the package. The storm coming hunt brings the player elves on a typical sea elf fishing expedition. Little Smoke Island is a new island discovered by exploring or by lost elves. Uh, a sultan small town with the story of a raid on a well protected island. Players can portray either the attackers or the defenders, or both. So that's quite a lot. Of, that's quite a dense blurb, I have to say. But here we've got a picture of a, um, another elf on top, um, right? CF riding a wave rider, um, same as on the front. And um, that was by Wendy Pinney. Um, that uh, cover is by Lisa A. Free. So open up, and here we've got um, the first um, you know, style and look of a classic Chaos um, role playing title from the mid 80s. Um, more penny artwork to accompany how to create a sea elf, including characteristics and skills, beginning skills, magic powers, and so on. And talking about things like their um, appearance, um, wave dancers, fishing and hunting, or other occupations, weapons, and magic, and the like. But, uh, before we get onto the islands, which deal with island flora and fauna, weather seismic activity great waves we've got a couple of tables here so one for the earthquakes um severity table and the great wave table so in what we've got i mean i think essentially the idea here is you have something um not unlike um the polynesian or um the pacific um islander um cultures um not sorry just drawing um directly from them as such as drawing parallels i would suggest because this is a fantasy setting it's not a fantasy version of, of polynesia or anything like that so um so uh, magic powers including bone shaping fish finding homing instinct storm scene and so on and then we've got also a list of sea 
uh, and island creatures, including big jaws and snappers, bluefish, boatbacks, eels, lizards, giants, uh, giant lizards, and so on. So, uh, decent selection of creatures to encounter for a lonely campaign or a campaign set amongst the sea elves. Um, many arms, um, essentially, um, are invertebrates with bulbous heads and eight arms, so octopi. Um, but more Wendy Penny Arts, essentially, um, uh, we have a sea elf um, diving for um, pearls, and we do the same thing for plants as well. Uh, and then, I mean, that's quite, quite, quite short, short necessarily. Um, before we get into the first scenario, the storm, storm coming hunt, but, uh, and that's only. That's only three pages. That's only three pages long. So, if we we'll go on to the start, of the second scenario, a uh, little smoke island. So that's kind of a little bit of a taster. Um, and this scenario, a little smoke island, can be used to supplement the storm coming out. So it can be used as an extension or as part of it, and so on. Um, and uh, here we have a, a nice little map of storm. Little smoke island, which again it's a style uh, art style um, mapped by uh, Carol, Caroline Schultz, which you know um, devotees of Kirsten's products from the 80s will recognize her style. Uh, the elf caves can be found on the island, and uh, sea elf the elf cave of Plato. The lizard there, so this is sort of like a mini sandbox for the player characters to explore um, once they land on the island. Whether they, they come because they've been looking for a new island, exploring, or because they've got lost, you know, perhaps caught in a storm, that sort of thing. You know, uh, not necessarily washed up on the island, but that's a possibility too. Then the third scenario: assault on um, a small tower island. This is a much denser scenario, um, but. Uh, and um, essentially they are going to face a couple of, a couple of um, raid leaders are going to attempt to, to, to assault an island which is supposed to be impregnable. And with this and then this you've got quite a lot of background and dense detail to go into. Um, which, uh, not much breaking up before we actually have a, uh, a plan, a map of a small tower island there. And essentially, it's all like a um, um, really. It, it's it's um, an island with uh, you know, as you can see, a sort of like an internal um, sort of network of caves. Uh, and this is, you know, almost the equivalent of uh, a dungeon for um, Elf Quest. Um, you know, they haven't quite got onto the top of the island, but they've certainly uh, discovered um, the caves inside. And this can be played in a multiple way. So you have uh, you know, Raider Group One, uh, Raiders Group Two. So four stats there, um, and then the natives. So stats for them as well. Um, but, uh, all the way down to the end here. So you can do, do this one in sort of, sort of you know, um, you could do it sort of like one of three ways. You could have one group assaulting the, the, the um, uh, a, a small tower island. You could have two groups doing it in competition or together. You could have um, def defenders against the raiders or, uh, and then also essentially you have another group of players playing the raiders, one playing the defenders, that sort of thing. There's a bit of flexibility there. Um, so yeah, I don't know whether this quite promises to have sort of everything you need to play a campaign as such. You, potentially with the three scenarios you've got a, sort of like a short mini campaign which you probably expand with further scenarios uh, if you were to look at this today. Um, it's fairly a dense little supplement given that it is um, essentially um, 48 pages or so. Um, to, but yeah, if you want to take your Elf Quest campaign um, or start your uh, in a different direction or start in a, di a very different place and environment, then CLs is um, an interesting option. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this unboxing in the nook and this little, little retrospective. If you have, then please do click on the like button 
down below. And of course, if you've got any comments or feedback, I appreciate you taking the time to post those. And lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxings in the nook, where you'll see me out here with a parcel containing a book or game, which I will unbox and chat about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so, all of course accompanied by a nice hot cup of tea. Then please do hit the subscribe button down below. In the meantime, thanks for, thanks for watching another unboxing nook. I'll be back again soon with another one. Bye for now.